Hi, everybody. Uh, how's everybody doing? Good. All right, good. All right, so uh, I'm Bikram. Uh, I work in the Angular team, uh, and uh, I lead the Angular Universal project. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking about strategies for server-side rendering. Uh, and essentially, it's not just about the server side, but how we uh, transfer the bits from the server to the client too. So there's a lot of the client side stuff also involved when you are thinking about this. Uh, so before any of like going into any of the new strategies, uh, we just want to like uh, give a short uh, description of why you would be interested in uh, server-side rendering. Uh, this is a slide from Igor's SEO presentation. Um, so uh, essentially, server-side rendering is uh, not like completely uh, necessary if you want to do SEO. Client-side SEO is also possible. Uh, but what server-side rendering uh, allows you to do is uh, get better quality of uh, SEO. So, uh, so far, um, whenever some uh, people have been asking who should use it, we have been just saying, hey, if you want faster performance, SEO or social preview, use so, uh, Angular Universal. Uh, but that just seems to confuse people more. Uh, so what we would like to present uh, here uh, in ng-conf is uh, something that uh, Jeff Welpley uh, who's uh, one of the original co-founders of Angular Universal uh, told me, uh, is to think about whether uh, your users discover your app for the first time through a link, right? So uh, this means that uh, this includes uh, SEO crawlers, essentially being able to get uh, into your site and index uh, every relevant information in your site so that it makes your app more discoverable, right? And uh, one of the more important things to uh, think about when you think about uh, SEO is uh, it is not just about like on-screen SEO where the crawler can get to your data, but also about off-screen SEO where uh, components like Google Anal Analytics are tracking whether new users to your site are bouncing off uh, too quickly. Uh, this would also degrade your uh, SEO rankings and not uh, rank you as one of the authoritative uh, sources of information, right? So, uh, so performance and SEO go hand in hand, and we should think of it more in terms of discoverability of your uh, application or website. So from there, uh, let's just consider um, a demo that I built, uh, especially for this talk, uh, it's called the Angular Shop. It's essentially masquerading uh, an e-commerce site, and um, it 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 is essentially something where you can buy. Uh, it, it sells uh, Google uh, branded uh, merchandise. Uh, please don't sell Google branded merchandise. Google will sue you. Uh, this is just an example, right? So uh, this is forked from the Polymer shop, so all the images and everything is gone from that. So uh, I wanted to see, like, uh, this is like a typical Angular application using the router, lazy loading, material components, everything that makes developing in Angular enjoyable, right? So it's, it's uh, supposed to represent a typical Angular application. So it's using, already using the CLI, so it's using AOT, it's using build optimizer, it's using minification, so we should be good, right? So this is just like, the, like a very initial setup uh, that I had for this application. Uh, and I essentially ran Lighthouse uh, just on the same machine I was running my server. Uh, and these are uh, not like real world numbers, uh, but you should treat them more like uh, numbers that you want to compare your different strategies with, so that you at least know whether it's going, getting better or worse, right? So uh, we, I got the uh, Lighthouse numbers uh, just for a pure client-side app, right? So uh, your server sends an empty index page, so up till almost uh, 2.8 seconds, uh, there's nothing on the screen. 
and the client uh, is essentially downloading the JavaScript, parsing, bootstrapping your client app all in this time, right? And um, after that, the client takes over. It's doing more XHRs to fetch the data for this particular page. Uh, and when it finishes bootstrapping uh, and it's ready to uh, display something meaningful it's, uh, and fully interactive, it's around four seconds according to Lighthouse. But as you can see, it's almost 4.7 seconds before you see something useful on the screen. Uh, so the next step I did then was, OK, let's just add server-side rendering, right? And that's what probably most of you will try to do. So let's see what happens when you do that, right? So uh, this is how the page looks after I introduce server-side rendering to this app. As you can see, the first uh, meaningful paint numbers got a lot better, right? Because the server is uh, rendering the view for you. and uh, and you have bits of HTML with meaningful data coming to your browser directly, which the browser is able to display even before the JavaScript bootstraps. So let's compare it with the previous numbers we had. The first meaningful paint numbers are great, uh, but the first interactive numbers have actually become worse. Uh, what's happening? So what's happening here is essentially uh, the server sent more HTML data, which the browser waited for and showed, uh, but it's still doing the same thing it did before, which is essentially downloading the whole JavaScript, bootstrapping, and everything. So it just got moved up after those 1.3 uh, seconds almost. So, um, so first meaningful by day, first interactive, boo. So where is the problem? Uh, by now, it should be obvious. It's not on the server. The server is trying to do its best, sending bits early. Uh, it's actually the JavaScript size, right? the size of the JavaScript you are sending. Uh, so again, as Angular developers, uh, we like the convenience of using uh, different features of Angular, uh, component libraries like material components, but all of those have a cost that essentially adds up to your uh, bundle size. So is there something we can do to uh, essentially get fast first paint as well as uh, get to uh, interactive fast, right? So, so the strategy that I'm essentially experimenting with uh, and uh, we are looking into more in the Angular team is to see whether we can uh, chunk the JavaScript sent to the client and loaded uh, into like smaller chunks. All right, so, so far we have had um, lazy loaded, loading boundaries uh, uh, using the router. Uh, that is good, that's a good start. Uh, but we want to see if uh, we can do something to make it even more fine-grained. So we want to break the JavaScript in small chunks and load it prioritized by importance. So what does that mean? So uh, let's look at our example application again. So some of the important things uh, that the user would want to do as soon as, the, uh, as they see the server-rendered view is essentially to be able to uh, scroll and browse uh, your e-commerce site, of course, and uh, adding stuff to cart, right? You want them to buy stuff, right? And that is the part of the app you want to enable uh, as quickly as possible. And of course, you would want to sh them to show feedback as soon as they add stuff to the cart so that they are not confused as to uh, what happened to the things they added to the cart. So we want to see, is there a way to essentially make parts of your server rendered view interactive first and much faster uh, so that uh, users have a much better experience when they come to your site, right? So, uh, so it would be nice if we can have like a standalone component that took over the add to cart and, uh, and could talk to a cart service and uh, that talk to a batch component that updated the batch, right? This is like the minimum uh, application that you want to bootstrap. So what are the things that are outside of this? Uh, we don't really care about the router at this point, 
uh, we really don't want to load it. Uh, we really don't want to pay the cost of bringing all the material components. Uh, there's a card component here. Uh, there's a navigation bar. Uh, all those are fine, but they don't immediately contribute to uh, what the user is trying to do right now. So the essence of the strategy that we are uh, trying to see is, is there something we can do to just bring up parts of your app? And uh, starting from Angular 6, uh, what we have is essentially uh, Angular elements. Uh, and we think this is one of those things which can uh, let us bootstrap your app into like smaller, in smaller chunks. So there are standalone components, uh, and they essentially can take over uh, DOM elements uh, in your document and upgrade them, essentially adding interactivity or features on top of them. And the nice thing about Angular elements on top of custom elements or web components is essentially uh, you can still make use of uh, Angular's dependency injection, which you all love and uh, would like to use. So in our case, uh, it's the essentially individual components being able to talk to the card service, right? So, so essentially, what is the, uh, we are calling it like hybrid rendering with elements as the, the name of the strategy. So what does it mean? So first, the server renders uh, the, uh, your document, but it now adds extra Angular elements. But the server essentially treats them as uh, black boxes, right? It, it doesn't uh, know what to do uh, with those DOM elements at this point. So it comes to the client. Uh, and we have uh, a bootstrap module, which is like a bare bones version of your Angular application, which brings up nothing other than the browser module, right? So it's like the absolute uh, essential for you to run an Angular app. And uh, the bootstrap module comes up and is able to lazy load the JavaScript uh, required just to bring those Angular elements in your page. So what happens after that? Uh, so those Angular element modules essentially define custom elements, which, are, uh, which now are able to take over uh, the Angular elements which uh, the server rendered. Is it clear? I take that as yes. Uh, and so the browser. Uh, essentially takes uh, the definition of the custom elements and you're magically, so it's, you can almost think of it as um, taking the server rendered view and sprinkling little bits of interaction on top of it, right? So we can do it in like finer grained, uh, as finer grained elements and with more control. So uh, quickly going through, Bootstrap, it loads a, one module and it gets the card service and loads the batch module, fine. So um, I just want to go through, there's a lot more slides to go through. So, uh, so let's go through some of like the code behind this, right? So uh, what does the server side view look like? So this is what it looked like before. So the add to cart is just a button in like a ng4 of material cards. Um, and this gets rendered on the server, right? Uh, so what is the uh, new thing that we want to add to this? Essentially, what we are adding uh, to the template is uh, add to cart custom element. Uh, and it is given all the data it needs to independently bootstrap and function, right? So Angular Elements essentially interacts with its external environment through either uh, Angular DI, or it can also take in data through uh, attributes. So here we are hooking up uh, the attributes uh, of the custom element and passing in all the data it needs to function independently, essentially. So, um, so what happens on the client? So the bootstrap module, uh, when it bootstraps, doesn't do anything, like it doesn't bootstrap any other, uh, like an app root or anything like that. It's in some sense like a headless uh, Angular application, right? And all it does is it starts loading the essential bits, which is here, uh, at, like uh, loading the add to cart module. Uh, 
Um, so if you had seen Rob's talk, uh, this is essentially how you uh, hook up the injector of the a top level bootstrap mod module uh, into the custom element, uh, Angular element that you're creating. So, um, and this is on the uh, add to cart module side. It, it receives the injector, uh, which the bootstrap module just gave it, and is able to define a custom element. And now you have a fully functional custom element that is independent in some sense but it's also hooked up into Angular's DI mechanism, right? So you get the best of both worlds. So uh, the next step is uh, what does it do with all the data we send? So all the attributes that we set on the server uh, gets hooked up into inputs of the uh, component. So here we are taking all the information for it to uh, handle uh, the uh, inventory item that it wants to add to the cart. So, and the nice thing about uh, this is your template uh, just says ng content, which is, uh, is a nice way of saying, hey, take over the existing DOM without actually replacing any of the elements, right? Because the add to cart uh, doesn't uh, really want to do anything other than add a click handler, essentially. So, uh, so this is a very nice uh, feature of Angular element. So, in, in this way, it allows a, us to somewhat hydrate existing server view uh, with uh, Angular element uh, behavior. So, um, so it gets the name, this is got sent, and it's able to use DI because we set up all the injectors. Uh, the host listener be, uh, behaves the same way as in any Angular component. It listens for the click, uh, and it's that's it. Like it actually performs its function. Uh, without even uh, loading any of uh, the rest of Angular. So uh, we go through a similar exercise with the badge. So I'm just going to go through. And here, uh, it, it does something slightly different. Uh, it just doesn't take the ng content and reflect it, but it actually encapsulates in a material badge, right? So that it can add a badge to the element uh, that is represented by the ng content. So you can do lots of cool things with this uh, ng content feature of Angular elements. Uh, so a note on card service. Um, card service is essentially described as a tree shakeable injector. Uh, what this allows us to do is, is essentially uh, not have to always provide it in the bootstrap modules because that will increase the size of your main bundle. Uh, but uh, allow it to come up whenever somebody asks for it first, right? So here in this case, add to cart is the component that's asking for it first, so it delays uh, creation, creating till somebody asks for it. And when it gets created, it gets added to the bootstrap module, right? And when a next module comes and asks for the same service, uh, it is essentially able to walk the injector tree, and, and by now the cart service is attached to your root module. Uh, and so you avoid having to pay the cost of putting the cart service in the root module just because you don't know at what point the service gets instantiated. Right? So this is another strategy you can use in Angular 6 and beyond to avoid paying the cost for uh, your main model. So what happens to, uh, so tree shakeable providers are default uh, in Angular CLI 6.0. Uh, Alex Ricoba, who wrote the feature, says there's no reason why you don't want to use tree shakeable. So just use it. If you are the one percent user who doesn't want to use it, you already know why. So what did it do to the bundle size from 500 and something KB? It now came down to 172 KB just for uh, the app bootstrap module, which is really good. And the chunks that are loaded are more in the order of 8K, 5K. So you really get like a really fine-grained way of loading your app. So what did it do to the performance? Uh, first meaningful paint is 1.4 down from 2.8. But first interactive actually went down from 4.1 to 2.6. So we now have best of both worlds. So this is essentially the strategy that we are trying to experiment in Angular 6 with Angular Elements. So the future looks good. We want to provide better ergonomics. As you can see, there's a lot of uh, like uh, fiddling uh, and plumbing things by hand. We, we want to make it um, more easy to do and better integrated with the framework. And uh, 
with Ivy, essentially, uh, one of the cool things is for Ivy is everything is tree shaken at a much granular level. You might ask, like, I'm never going to write a Hello World program, right? Why do I care about 2.7 KB and the cake? We like the cake. Uh, but uh, why, why should we care about the 2.7 KB? But as you can see with the angular elements and the granular level at which we can load things, this becomes more important because now you can actually uh, define and load um, angular elements into your server-side render view like 2.7K at a time, right? Which, which makes your app run really good. So to summarize, Use SSR if you want your users to discover your apps through links. Render initial view on server. That doesn't change, but what we are trying to experiment is loading the JavaScript in smaller chunks. And Angular 6.0 and beyond will make this easier. So slides are here. I've put up uh, the experiment app there. It has four levels, starting from uh, the regular app to level four, crazy. Everything is like hacked up. So. So thanks a lot. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this talk. Thank you.